Speakers, publishers, consultants, coaches, and info marketers unite. The Speaking of Wealth Show is your roadmap to success and significance. Learn the latest tools, technologies, and tactics to get more bookings, sell more products, and attract more clients. If you're looking to increase your direct response sales, create a big-time personal brand, and become the go-to guru, the Speaking of Wealth Show is for you. Here's your host, Jason Hartman. Welcome to the Speaking of Wealth Show. This is your host, Jason Hartman, where we discuss profit strategies for speakers, publishers, authors, consultants, coaches, info marketers, and just go over a whole bunch of exciting things that you can use to increase your business, to make your business more successful and more and more passive and more and more automated and more and more scalable. So we will be back with a great interview. Be sure to visit us at speakingofwealth.com. You can take advantage of our blog, subscribe to the RSS feed, and many other resources for free at speakingofwealth.com. And we will be back with a great interview for you in less than 60 seconds. What's great about the shows you'll find on jasonhartman.com is that if you want to learn about some cool new investor software, there's a show for that. If you want to learn why Rome fell, Hitler rose, and Enron failed, there's a show for that. If you want to know about property evaluation technology on the iPhone, there's a show for that. And if you'd like to know how to make millions with mobile homes, there's even a show for that. Yep, there's a show for just about anything, only from jasonhartman.com. Or type in Jason Hartman in the iTunes store. My pleasure to welcome Jamie Craig over to the show. She is the producer and one of the co-hosts of the Awakenings podcast. And this is an interesting show and they've had some great growth and some great opportunities coming from not knowing anything about podcasting three and a half years ago to uh, pretty exciting results nowadays. So she's coming to us today from St. Louis, Missouri. Jamie, how are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me on your show. My pleasure. Welcome. So tell us about your show and you know a little bit about the subject matter too. Awakenings is a podcast that is dedicated to a young adult book series called The Secrets of the Immortal Nicholas Flamel. It's by author Michael Scott. And the book series, a little bit about that, it's a series about, it's a magic fantasy type series, it centers around two teenage twins, a boy and a girl, age 15, that are thrust into the world of magic and all of the characters surrounding them, the main one being Nicholas Flamel at the beginning, all the characters that they're introduced to are either historical characters or mythological characters. So there are all these characters that can be looked up online, really existed in history or mythology, and they're kind of thrust into this world and realize, wow, these people are really real and they're immortal. And so um, we developed the podcast um, centered around discussing the book series. There's, it's a six book series. The sixth book actually comes out in just under a month from now. So um, we kind of discuss this series, discuss how it relates to history and mythology, try to guess what might happen next in the series. And what age group? It's young adult. It, we have readers as young as eight all the way up through adult. And what's the Harry Potter connection? Harry Potter connection is uh, the main character, Nicholas Flamel, who is actually a real person from history, a noted alchemist. Um, but he gets a mer uh, mention in the first Harry Potter book, The Sorcerer's Stone. And he is actually involved with in the Harry Potter series and kind of known from history as the founder of The Sorcerer's Stone, um, the whole idea of alchemy and turning regular objects into gold and there's all this myth surrounding how he became as rich as he did. Great. And there are other hosts that you do the show with? Yes, it is me and three other people. Uh, Jeff Smith, uh, Sean Gardell, and Kristen. And in terms of your format, Jamie, are all of you talking at the same time or do you do one show, Jeff does another, et cetera? We all, um, when available, we all, <laughs> most of the time, all four of us are on the show at the same time. Um, we kind of interact. We have a, a general format. We kind of talk about what news is going on with the series and then we have a topic that we discuss and we kind of, it's just an open discussion back and forth and 
you know, we always read our listener emails and we really enjoy having our listener interaction on the show too. That's a really big part of our show. Sure, that's great. And are you all located physically in the same place? No, we are not. Uh, (laughs) We're kind of all over the place. Uh, Most of them are on the East Coast. One's in Massachusetts, one's in Pennsylvania, and one is in West Virginia. And any tips how you do that logistically since you're located in different areas? Well, uh, we usually email constantly just to figure out schedules. Um, We kind of worked out a Uh, Our show airs once a month, so we kind of worked out a general schedule, and sometimes that doesn't always work out, but email back and forth, and then when we're actually doing the show, we all use Skype and get on and chat on Skype. And you probably just use Call Recorder or something like that? Yeah, we have a Call Recorder that we use. Fantastic. And so uh, your show is audio only? It is audio only, yeah. Okay, great. And typical episode length? Usually right around the hour to an hour and a half mark. Uh huh. Okay. And have you experimented with different lengths for your show, or have they always been an hour to an hour and a half? They they usually tend to fall right around then, um, depending on the topic of discussion. Sometimes we go longer if it's a good discussion's really going well. So um, it kind of just depends on how much we have to say about the topic and how things go. Good. And how many episodes now? Three and a half years, once a month. Exactly. What number are you on? Um, We are about to record episode 42, so heading toward that 50 mark. (laughs) Fantastic. And what has the growth been like as you've gone along? All all podcasts seem to start in a very humble manner and then kind of grow out from there. Yeah, we started, um, we were lucky enough to be tied to a fan site, and um, so we, we had a lot of fan involvement off the bat, we had quite a few. I mean, a lot of it was staff members of the site when we started. Um, and we have polls and things every month, and it seems like the numbers just keep going up. And it's it's kind of hard to estimate. They say somewhere around 50% of your listeners won't even actually interact with your site. So we kind of have a rough estimate of what we're getting. But, yeah, we're we have a lot more listeners than we did when we started. Do you care to share any of your download statistics or anything like that? I am actually not very familiar with our download statistics. Um, It's kind of a team effort, and that's uh, what Sean usually takes care of. So, So Jamie, with your growth and the success of the show, first of all, in, in terms of growth, have you ever had, I assume most of your audience comes from iTunes, have you ever had like a, a mention as the show selected by iTunes staff or anything like that? Um, we've been featured a couple times on iTunes in our particular category, but yeah, I don't, I don't other than being on the featured list, I don't know that we hit their their top download list because I think a lot of our listeners actually go directly to our site. Oh, they, they go to the actual site first, huh? Yep. Okay, great. And listeners, I assume all over the world, any particular place your audience is coming from? Yeah, we get listeners from everywhere. We actually have one of the elements of our show is we have a question of the month. And one of the things we ask is, where are you answering from? And we get, yeah, all over the place. So it's pretty cool. Fantastic. Now, is there, is this just something that you're all doing as a, as a great hobby, uh, a general interest? Are you monetizing it? And is there a business uh, as sort of a back end to the podcast? It's mostly just for fun. Um, We've been experimenting a little bit on the site with ads and things like that. But other than that, it's mainly just a group of people that came together over something that they really enjoy and really enjoy talking about and just finding other fans that enjoy hearing what we have to say and getting involved with the show. So so you all have day jobs that are probably completely unrelated to this, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. And ha- have any of you ever hosted or thought about hosting or starting other podcasts? I, I mean, the thought has crossed my mind. Um, obviously, with a full-time day job, I don't have a whole lot of free time. I'm always out there looking for other shows, requesting people for hosting and things like that. But yeah, I haven't really found anything that's really interested me at this point. But in terms of starting another show, I don't have the time to edit that much podcast footage. So Right, right. He talked to us a little bit, if you would, uh, Jamie, about some of your just sort of the kind of the technical stuff in terms of what software you're using, what equipment. First of all, what editing software do you use? Um, I use a free program called Audacity. Uh, yep, very famous, <laughs> well-known. <laughs> so Audacity, which is free. And, you know, that's just, that program is so highly acclaimed. It's amazing. Free, you know, you can't beat the price, right? <laughs> Cannot beat the price, and it is user-friendly. It's, it's as easy as cutting and pasting 
pasting in a document. Great. And so you use Audacity and you do the editing for the show, right? I do. And in, in terms of microphones, I know you use, you, you just use call recorder. That's actually the name of the program. Uh, um, or do you use another product? I for use another Skype? program called iFree Skype Recorder, another free program. So um, yeah, when I first started looking into podcasting, I just did a ton of research to see what is out there. And there's a lot of great software out there that you can pay for, but there's also a lot of great free software. Although buyer beware, there is some really bad free software out right, there too. Right, right. Well, and there's some bad paid software too. Yeah, that yeah. too. <laughs> no question. In terms of like microphones or anything like that, do you use anything swanky or special or just, I've recorded podcasts on the earbuds that come with my iPhone before and it's surprising. It sounds surprisingly good. Yeah. Uh, I'm not doing that now. I don't do it most of the time, but in a pinch when you need to. Yeah, I just bought like a $10, $15 headset from Walmart. That's what I use. So it's really easy, cheap, free. <laughs> yeah, that sounds pretty good. <laughs> so that's great. Well, any other technology that you want to mention? In terms of podcasting, I think I hit it all. The Skype, the recorder, and then the editing software. And I think that's about it. It seems like it would be a lot more difficult to come up with podcasts, but it's really... It's pretty darn easy. Who yeah. are you, what, how are you doing your hosting? Are you using WordPress, using Libsyn, or another podcasting service, or uh, just, a, just a website? Um, we have it on our website, and then we use iTunes. We're using Podcast Alley, although over the last three and a half years, we've noticed a marketable um, down slope on their maintaining their site. Um, so we're kind of giving up on them. They've been really bad about their tech end and keeping that up. And then we also host on Blueberry, which is an up and coming hosting site. Yep. Yep. And Blueberry keeps track of stats and so forth. So that's really neat. Anything you want to mention in terms of like listener engagement? It sounds like you're doing a really good job of that. Certainly you're asking your fans and your listeners to participate in the show? Are you holding contests? I know you're having them say, you know, where in the world they're from. Anything you want to mention about that? One of the big elements of our show, and I think we spend about at least half the time discussing things that are listener related. Um, We're always asking for listeners to email us. uh, Like I said, we do question of the month. um, So it's usually related to the topic that we're discussing. And we just want to hear what the listeners have to think about the topic, kind of get our minds going too, just to hear what they have to say and kind of gives us some things to talk about as well. We also do a monthly poll that we talk about, kind of see what the listeners think on another topic that's related to the overall discussion. So we really enjoy our listener interaction. We also have a answering machine on our podcast line so listeners can call in and hear themselves on the show too sometimes so and is that is that just a skype line with voicemail it is a skype line with a voicemail yeah and how do you take the recording off of that or do you just play it live or there a lot of the podcast software has um ability to pipe it through skype or the recording software has the ability to pipe it through skype and um so that everybody on the call can hear what's being said on the music or the the recording so so in terms of listener engagement anything else you want to mention uh no just we love hearing from our listeners and we think they're a really important element of the show because obviously if we didn't have listeners we would just be talking to ourselves sure (laughs) sure and and they can they can call in and leave a voice message hear themselves on the show do you ever do live shows you know that's sort of an interesting area of podcasting that's rarely done but i've noticed some people doing it where they'll do a show at a specific time have people yeah. call in, do a dialogue. I have not done that in any of mine, but it's sort of interesting. You know, it gives it that kind of the radio show mentality. Yeah, we've talked about doing that. Um, I, we haven't actually executed it. Um, it's yet yeah, something we've definitely discussed and would maybe like to look into in the future. But it's hard with you know having listeners worldwide to find a good time that everybody can join in. And another element of our show, because we have young listeners, we have to be really careful about what's said on the show and keeping it family friendly. So editing is a big portion of maintaining that. I I would be surprised that it's that difficult with your content area, though. I mean, would people call in and cuss? And (laughs) I'd be surprised. Is that what you're going to say? Yeah, yeah, I, I think worrying about the element of, yeah, other people calling in and then just, I think our group as a host, we have a a unique friendship. Like we've, I, I've only actually met one of them in real life in person. Um, but we, you know, we kind of 
go off on a tangent sometimes and that's not related and, you know, may or may not be a good discussion topic for the show. So I think, yeah, we, because we're such, we're so close and we've been talking to each other for so long, us just as hosts could run off in a direction that's not good for the show. So. Right, right. Okay. So you got to keep yourselves in line too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a worry in the live show. Okay. So. Makes sense. Makes sense. And I see on your website, you've got the books, I guess, of the book series. I mean, are you selling the books? No, it's just kind of, um, you know, synopsis of what the books are. And then um, I, I believe we also have links to like Amazon or the publishing where people can buy them if they're interested, but we don't directly sell them from the site. I'm almost surprised. So the, the, I'm surprised that the author or the publisher, Michael Scott, hasn't offered you maybe a stipend to promote the products more. Um, No, it's just kind of uh, something we approached him from the beginning and said, this is something we'd, we'd really like to start a fan site and a fan forum. And, you know, would you give us permission to do that? And when we talked to him, he said, you know, sure, we'd be, you know, I'd be flattered to have you, you know, as fans create this place where the fans could come together. And, you know, and then when he gave us permission, he said, and I'll do you one better, I'll come on the site, and I'll interact with the fans when I have time and available and come on and answer questions. So it's really more been about the fans the whole time, not really about him. It's just a place where everybody can come together and kind of discuss the shared interest. That's great. That's great. Well, what are your plans for the show? I mean, if you're at the, like, right around the 50, 50 episode mark, I mean, is there a time in the future when you'll have 300, 500 episodes? Will this go on forever? Or does it have a limited life? Uh, you know, I s- assume you really need Michael Scott to keep making books, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think uh, the series is actually coming to an end. Um, it's a six book series and the last book com- actually comes out in a little less than a month from now. So yeah, w- it's something we've been talking about a lot lately. Um, the, you know, the hosts and the staff of the site, you know, where do we go from here? And, you know, we, we definitely want to talk about the last book and we know we'll be podcasting after that. And Michael has announced that he's got another young adult series that is loosely linked to the full metal series. So, you know, it's kind of been thrown around that we would continue on and, you know, start discussing this new series, or we may have an offshoot show, you know, start a new show with a new name that's related to the new series. It's kind of still in discussion. (laughs) Yeah, fantastic. Well, good. Anything else you'd like people to know about the show or podcasting in general? You know, if you have advice for fellow podcasters, I'm sure they'd love to hear it. Yeah, sure. Um, In terms of advice, I started from having absolutely no knowledge, being asked to kind of look into podcasting and see how difficult it was. And really just with a little Googling and, you know, experimenting here and there, um, you can find the tools and you can find the advice out there. And it's it's really a lot easier than you would think it would be. So don't be afraid of it. Um, go out there and look at the look at the technology and see what's out there and see what works best for you. And Really, anybody can be a podcaster if they want to. Well, good. Well, thank you so much. Appreciate you sharing this with us, Jamie. And congratulations on your success and, you know, turning a hobby into something that down the road sometime may be more than a hobby. I I don't know if you want it to be, but certainly there's an option for that. So uh, appreciate you sharing it with us today. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Copyright the Hartman Media Company. For publication rights and interviews, please email media at jasonhartman.com. This show offers very general information. Opinions of guests are their own. Nothing contained herein should be considered personalized, personal, financial, investment, legal, or tax advice. Every investor's strategy and goals are unique. You should consult with a licensed real estate broker or agent or other licensed investment, tax, and or legal advisor before relying on any information contained herein. Information is not guaranteed. Please call 714-820-4200 and visit www.jasonhartman.com for additional disclaimers, disclosures, and questions.